So maybe you've heard about this, maybe you haven't. Ilhan Omar is uh, due to Republicans and now due to Democrats in hot water. And that's all people are talking about on Fox News, on Newsmax, etc. And guess what? They're trying to paint her as anti-Semitic again. Yeah, they are. Uh, the the uh, worst kerfuffle before this, where she was, where she were, where excuse me, stumbling all over my words, where she was smeared as an anti-Semite was about two years ago, and this is shaping up to be an even bigger kerfuffle than that. She has stated unequivocally she is not anti-Semitic, and a lot of these attacks have to do with the fact that she is Muslim. That is my opinion, and I think the evidence supports that as well. Um, I see we have a GoFundMe support coming in. Thank you, thank you, keep it going. Um, so Ilhan Omar was, was speaking and asked Secretary Blinken a question about um, the ICC and how it is treated, how the United States war crimes, um, Israel's Hamas, how these crimes are um, dealt with or handled in the ICC, okay? So with that context in mind, uh, go ahead, Colin, and play Ilhan's video to Secretary Blinken, please. Uh, I know you oppose the court's investigation in both um, Palestine and in Afghanistan. I haven't seen any evidence in either cases that domestic courts can, uh, both can and will prosecute alleged war crimes and crimes against humanity. And I would emphasize that in Israel and Palestine, uh, this includes crimes committed by both the Israeli security forces and Hamas. In Afghanistan, it includes crimes committed by the Af Afghan national government and the Taliban. So in both of these cases, if domestic courts can't or won't pursue justice, and we oppose the ICC, where do we think the victims of these supposed uh, crimes can go for justice? In, in both of these cases, if domestic courts can't or won't pursue justice, and we oppose the ICC, where do we think victims are supposed to go for justice? And what justice mechanisms do you support for them? Thank, uh, thank you. Um, first, l l l let me just say at the outset that um, it is impossible not to be profoundly moved by uh, not just the, uh, uh, the loss of life in the recent uh, violence and, and, and conflict, uh, but especially uh, the children whose whose lives were lost. And we 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 all have a you know a tendency to throw statistics and numbers out there, but uh, we were talking about um, boys and girls, Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, as well as men and women, and uh, I think uh, none of us, from whatever from whatever perspective we we come, uh, can can lose sight of that. So that's one thing that's that's very important. Look, I, you know our views on um, uh, on the ICC and its its jurisdiction. We continue to believe that absent uh, a Security Council uh, referral or absent uh, the uh, request by the, uh, the state itself. Uh, that that's not appropriate. I continue uh, to believe that whether it is uh, the United States or Israel, uh, both of us uh, have the uh, have the means. Mr. Secretary, I, I do understand that point. I'm asking what mechanisms do you think is, is available to them? I, I believe that we have, uh, whether it's the United States or Israel, we both have uh, the mechanisms to um, make, make sure that there is accountability uh, in uh, uh, in, in any situations where there are concerns about um, uh, use of force uh, and uh, human rights, uh, et cetera. I believe that both of our democracies have that, uh, have that capacity, and we've demonstrated it, and uh, we'll need to continue to demonstrate it going forward. And in the case of Afghanistan? Uh, with regard to Afghanistan, if it's our uh, objection, as you know, was, was to the assertion of jurisdiction uh, over the United States in the absence of a Security Council uh, uh, referral. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, we have 
uh, the uh, the means if there are any uh, uh, cases to uh, to be brought to um, to adjudicate them and to uh, to find justice. So, to me, it makes perfect sense. We all know that the United States commits war crimes. What did we do in 2001? We lied our way into war, war that we are still in. Obama with, with all of his drone strikes. We are, we, our country commits war crimes. Just because it's us doing it doesn't mean it's great and wonderful. People need to get that out of their minds. Republicans, especially conservatives, especially need to get that out of their minds. America isn't exceptional. America isn't perfect. Like, the, the children we kill because they're brown, they don't mean less. We're awful. So that's what she's talking about. The ICC, which is supposed to, you know, be an international crime court. Yeah, Israel, we can all agree, has committed war crimes, including last month. Right? You know, remember that time that nobody's talking about where they just decided to take out the building the AP and Al Jazeera were housed in, the Associated Press? They took out the building the Associated Press was in. Well, that's not, nobody, you know, no Associated Press person died, et cetera. That's definitely not at the top of the list. I'm just saying America forgets. America has forgotten those 60 plus children who were murdered by Israel. Um, America's forgotten, America's gone back to sleep. Israel commits war crimes. CNN, CNN's producer was in, uh, was in, I can't, I guess it was by, yeah, I think this was by the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Israeli guards or the IDF, I don't, I don't remember which, you know, faction it was, just started beating the producer for no reason, beating journalists. So CNN didn't report on it. CNN, your producer is getting beaten for no reason. Why aren't you reporting on it? There's so many war crimes committed by Israel. And then Ilhan, Congresswoman Omar talks about Hamas. Yes, which people have a variety of opinions on. We can all agree that they commit war crimes. They're not angels by any sense of the word. It's absolutely crazy what these what these folks are doing. And Mehdi Hassan, um, love him or not, he makes a great point. He tweeted, does Pelosi have time? And so he's speaking of this, uh, this statement from leadership that, um, that was put out about Ilhan Omar, which I will read next. But Mehdi makes a great point saying, does Pelosi have time to acknowledge GOP members of the House, like Paul Gosar, attending white nationalist conferences with Holocaust deniers? How about Lauren Boebert putting crosshairs on Omar by calling her an honorary member of Hamas. Does the speaker have anything to say? Hmm, interesting. It's interesting, isn't it? What gets called out and what doesn't? And Colin, I'll go ahead and read the statement from Speaker Nancy and her cronies. The statement comes out of DC, of course, from Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Majority Leader Steny Hoyer, Majority Whip James Clyburn, Assistant Speaker Catherine Clark, Caucus Chairman Hakeem Jeffries, and Caucus Vice Chair Pete Aguilar uh, issuing this joint statement, which I'll get into the shadiness of even more, some of the behind the scenes shadiness. They say, Legitimate criticism of the policies of both the United States and Israel is protected by the values of free speech and democratic debate. And indeed, such criticism is essential to the strength and health of our democracies. But drawing false equivalencies between democracies like the United States and Israel and groups that engage in terrorism like Hamas and the Taliban foments prejudice and undermines progress toward a future of peace and security for all. We welcome the clarification by Congresswoman Omar that there is no moral equivalency between the U.S. and Israel and Hamas and the Taliban, which, of course, my friends, is nothing at all like what Ilhan Omar actually said. This is not what Congresswoman Omar said at all. She is not equating so-called democracies like the United States 
and Israel and, and the Taliban, for God's sake. She's not equating them with Hamas. That's not what she's doing. She was bringing up cases in the ICC. Cases. So if, if you believe that that there are instances where countries or organizations should be held accountable, saying that they should all be held accountable for their actions does not mean you are equating their actions. And we can all disagree on how equal these actions are and aren't. I'm sure some of you think, oh, how could you say bad things about the United States? Probably not you guys, but some people out there. Um, and, and how could you you know, do X, Y, Z, and oh my goodness, how could you even put, you know, Hamas in the same category? But that's not what's happening. What's happening is there are war crimes for all of all of the above, right? So it's about the accountability. It's about the ICC and these cases. What they are doing is exactly what they mean to do. What they mean to do is spin this and smear Ilhan Omar. That's exactly what they want to happen because the lobbies won't let them have it otherwise. That's what's happening here. And in case you thought, oh, maybe they're saying this in good faith, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe. Colin, can you go ahead and pull up that New York Times quote that starts a house democratic aid? Yeah, yeah if you're thinking this was done in good faith, that these, these leaders actually care, the answer is no, because Representative Omar did reach out to these people. By these people, I mean Nancy Pelosi and her cronies. A House Democratic, this is out of the New York Times, a House Democratic aide familiar with the back and forth said Ms. Omar's anger stemmed from her treatment by the dozen colleagues who publicly abraded her. She had heard that they were going to publicly call for a clarification of her remarks and reached out to some of them several times on Wednesday. They did not respond before their public chastisement, said the aide, who spoke on the condition of anonymity to describe private discussions. So if anyone is making the argument that Nancy Pelosi, Hakeem Jeffries are acting in, in good faith here, that gets, that gets flown right out the window. Of course they aren't. She reached out. She reached out. They didn't answer her. They didn't respond to her. If they really cared, if they really wanted clarification, why didn't they respond? 